Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Assassin's Creed The Truth. This time, it's not going to be like really structured, me doing commentary over a theory or something. I want to play around a bit here in Assassin's Creed 1 and have a look at some cool shit that I'm really into. Those things are the blood messages. See what we can read, what we can take away. Because sometimes I find that they're overlooked uh, uh, and they're very important. So here we are, as Desmond, in Abstergo Industries, back in 2012. There's no blood messages in the bathroom. I didn't think there were. Which you'd think that's where, like, they'd be, to be honest. You'd think he'd have cut himself in the bathroom or something. But it is what it is. Whoa, Jesus, okay. Where are we? So what have we got? In the bedroom, we've just got the back wall. So for those who don't know, ladies and gentlemen, I should probably just add this, is that uh, <clears throat> the blood messages are messages left behind by Subject 16 uh, to be a bit of a warning and story that he's telling himself with lots of mysterious symbols and things like that that we see from in later Assassin's Creed games, things like Sages and, and whatnot and the first Civ. So from these blood messages, what can we take away? Let's look at some symbols you may not know the meanings of. You may not understand. You may not have uh, really looked into. So we'll start with what's in the bedroom, what's on the wall here. Uh, there's some symbols I don't even understand. So let's have a look, shall we? So we are all books containing to thousands of pages, uh, and within each of them lies an irreparable truth. We are all books containing thousands of pages, so I guess he's referring to uh, people as books, obviously, and talking about how we contain ancestors' DNA, irreparable truth. Uh, thousands of, we all contain thousands of pages, so we carry our histories of the past with us. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, yes, so, turns out, so you see 2213, and you see it again, down here, down the, right there, and that's actually a verse from the Bible, the book of Revelations, which reads, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Obviously, 16's a very cryptic, creepy dude. I've entered the abyss and never returned. Well, we know that he's pretty fucked up. Killed himself, entered the grey with lovely Juno. And we know that... Uh, oh, there's 2213 again. Uh, we know that 16 is a bloody instrument of the first will, pretty sure. So 13... 0 .0 .0 and it appears in different forms a couple of times. Yeah, you see like 13.0.0, yeah, there's 13 and shit. I bel from my understanding, it's actually to do with the Mayan calendar. Maybe I'm totally off here, but I'm pr fairly certain it's to do with the Mayan calendar. And it actually refers to... Uh, the 13th age of whatever and when everything reaches zero that's actually the 21st of December 2012 like that's the date and the Mayan calendar version of what ours would be the 21st of December 2012 when the world was supposed to end and the sun and all that shit that's I'm pretty sure that's what it is okay now we have two sentences or well, one sentence that are kind of disconnected almost so one's at the top there and it connects to uh, this one here. So it's within Emperor Jai Jing Sin and Qual Qualzicotes? Hunger Lies the Answers. So Emperor Jai Jing, uh, he was like some Chinese emperor from, well I guess the writer must be Chinese then as well you'd think. Um, <coughs> uh, in the 16th century, uh, Killed a lot of people, you know, what what Chinese emperors do, I guess. I don't know. That's Is that a race? Oh, assuming culture. Racist. 
and then the Qual's Cult. I can't even pronounce that. Is that what it says? Qual's Cult? I don't know. I have no idea. Some like deity. I think it's a Native American one. Yeah, I believe he's some Native American deity. Uh, and I think that. Because I think there's a bunch of different stories from memory, but one of them was like that this was the version of Christ. I don't know, if, some of you may have heard the stories that some uh, Christians uh, and scholars believe uh, that Christ actually appeared in North America after his death. Like, there's some story of some white, obviously white dude, obviously Christ is a white guy, um, bearded guy, descended from the sky and visited some tribes or something, uh, and people consider him to be Christ, and it's just Jesus that actually arrived in North America somehow. Uh, I think that's who that I believe that's one of the versions but I, th I think there's probably different versions it usually is in Native American culture lots of different uh, versions I think that's it from this area I don't really know some of those symbols like the Omega symbol and all that sort of nonsense I don't really know exactly what the meanings of that and things so we'll move on let's go outside we've got plenty out here this is where the juicy stuff goes I'm gonna Try to go through all the ones I can understand to translate for you guys and give you some idea of their messaging and meaning. Obviously, there's no real clear, distinct answer to what we know the future lied with Subject 16 and his purpose and everything like that. Uh, because, uh, obviously, they were going to give the ability to decide and discover everything now. But I think some people could have figured out that they were talking about the end of the world and things like that with... Uh, the Mayan calendar things and there's I'm trying to f gonna try to find it now. I believe There's a actual barcode with the 21st of December 2012 date on it If I can stop having a spasm here And I saw before we went up there we have the like the step pyramid here It's like a symbol of Mayan architecture is it? Uh, and I guess it's Egyptian as well pyramids, but I believe that's a symbol for like Mayan Mayan culture. For that step pyramid. Let's head over here. We've got some cool stuff here. I really like this one. Yep. So here we got the barcode. So they've got two important ones here. And they're next to each other for a reason. So let's go through this. So we've got a barcode. The twelfth. So the December twenty first, two thousand and twelve. Obviously the end of the world date. But Desmond does end up saving the world, so there's that. And then above it, we've got some uh, lovely, lovely messages here. You gotta, you gotta love all of that. So, uh, they read, They drained my soul and made it theirs. I drained my body to show you where I saw it. So you can read it. You've got to read like li vertically, line to line to line. So you got from bottom to top. So T H E, that and then you go back down to Y. They drained my soul and made it theirs. I drained my body to show you where I saw it. Creepy, right? And then he's got the barcode and the date. And we can move forward. We've got these circles here. I'm trying to remember. Fuck, what do they mean again? Um, let me think. I feel like I should know this. There, there's the name for them. Something rings. Something rings. Boromine rings. That's it. Uh, some maths thing. Like... I don't know. And it, so, yeah, borrow mean rings, some mathematical thing. I forget really what the meaning is, but it's something about the links of them, the links of the circles. Uh, I can't, I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure I'm going to Google borrow mean rings. Okay, so the yeah, borrow mean rings, I was right. I think that's how you, yeah, borrow, borrow mean rings, yeah. Uh, so this is Wikipedia. In mathematics, the borrow mean rings consist of three topological circles which are linked and form a Brunian link. 
In other words, no two of the three rings are linked with each other as a hopfed, hop link, but nonetheless all three are linked. Fuck, I definitely don't get that. That definitely doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, I guess it's all about connectivity. Could that be a symbol for, because we've got obviously Juno, Jupiter, and Minerva, the three kind of uh, figures, the triad uh, of trying to save the world. Could that be to do with the triad? And it's talking about unlinking. If you unlink one, then two are unlinked. So kind of a simple form as Juno, unlinking, maybe, potentially. Maybe I'm grasping stra straws and just finding what fits, especially because I don't know if they'd come up with that storyline yet. But that is what it is. So we've got something cool in the corner here. It's actually, I had to look this up because it's actually a piece of Eden reference. So we've got three animals here. You've got a spider. Uh, that apparently is a fucking hummingbird. And we've got a monkey. So this is actually what is called the Nazca Lines. So it's a reference to a piece of Eden that's located in Peru. Apparently. That's, that's the thing there. I believe that it's talked about in uh, one of the database entries. I don't think it's two maybe it's probably i don't know i forget which game okay where are we let's find some more cool blood symbols here we go okay so this one is actually oh it's upside down let's go this way it's one of my favorites just because it's so fucked up and i love fucked up shit now this is another one of subject 16's real creepy messages so, it's the square of letters, it reads, Artifacts sent to the skies to control all nations, to make us obey a hidden crusade. Do not help them. So you guys can read that there. From right, vertically up, same with the, the triangle before, Artifacts sent to the skies to control all nations, to make them... To make us obey a hidden crusade, do not help them. So the message that 16 left behind in reference to Abstergo's plans to send a piece of Eden up in a satellite and send it down to control. We know it wouldn't have worked later on, thank God, but that was the plan in 16 was trying to warn us about that. For all my theories of 16 being a bad guy helping Juno, trying to get Desmond to go uh, and re resurrect Juno, he still was against the Templars at the same sense, so sometimes is it the case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend? It's an interesting thought, right? So you got this fucking, this creepy eye thing here. So this is straight out of Wikipedia, ladies and gentlemen, because obviously I want to make sure I get these right. So this is the Eye of Providence. It is a symbol showing an eye often surrounded by rays of light or a glory and usually enclosed by a triangle. It represents the eye of God watching over mankind. In, in the modern era, a notable depiction of the eye is the reverse of the Great Seal of the United States, which appears on the United States $1 bill. We see, where you see the pyramid and then the eye above it. So this is called the Eye of Horus. It is an ancient Egyptian symbol uh, of protection, royal power, and good health. The eye is personified in the goddess Wajet. Or Ujat. There's a bunch of different pronunciations for it. Uh, so the Eye of Horus is a symbol to the Eye of Ra, which belongs to a different god, Ra, but represents many of the same concepts. So, got plenty of people that uh, watch my Assassin's Creed content that know a lot about Egypt and will probably argue in the comments and tell me I'm wrong and I've read wrong info here on this video. But I believe uh, the, old, the old Google... It's, it's, it's never let me down. Only a few times. Uh, but, I mean, lots of this I already knew anyway. It's these couple of little ones. That I'm like, oh yeah, what do those symbols mean? I've never really looked into some of them. Whereas I know what this one is. So we've got here, we've got three triangles. Presumably, you'd think it's a representation of the pyramids in Egypt and the Pyramid of Giza, obviously. 
uh, when you see those three together like that, I don't really see what else it could represent. It's, isn't it interesting how many Egyptian symbols are here, right? Uh, or have reference to Egypt in some way? So, Empire confirmed, ladies and gentlemen. Empire confirmed. This is one of the other ones I had to look up. So it's uh, Yonaguni, which is an island in Japan, which has an underwater formation. So I'm not sure if... Um, so obviously there's Yonaguni here, but I, I, I assume that maybe the underwater formation is like um, the buildings here, like it un some things that are covered by water from flooding or from extreme natural disasters and the likes. Woo! Okay. We've got some stars here. We've got one star, I should say. And it looks su 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 super creepy. Obviously, it's a pentagram. Uh, usually associated with the devil and evil shit. Uh, Satanism. And isn't it interesting that the top of this symbol that represents the devil is pointed directly at the animus. A message from Subject 16 to let us know that this thing's evil. This thing is fucking the devil, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you right now. Subject 16 knew what the fuck was up, guys. He knew what was up. Obviously, Juno showed him a lot of different stuff. I think we don't have much more. I think there is one more. Two more. So you got a pyramid here with an apple at its apex. So, Pyramid of Eden. An original design consisting of a series of eyes bound within a triangle with a radiating apple directly above it. It symbolizes the Templar plan to send a piece of Eden into orbit in order to control those beneath it. And interesting that right after, you've got the writing from 16 explaining that exact fact, the artifacts sent to the skies to control all nations, yada yada. And then you've got above that, uh, the eye of God or what represents an eye of God a watching eye so perhaps you can look at this right here and you see Templar plan 16 warning but there's a watchful eye guarding against it is that a potential how he feels about Juno he feels that Juno is that watchful eye even though we know she's evil he's a part of her plan potentially I'm just fitting all of this into my theory that uh, Subject 16 is a member of the Instruments of the First Will but I think there's something there to be argued for sure but obviously there's so much here open to interpretation that's what these riddles and symbols are for open to some sort of interpretation of what they mean and what Subject 16 could mean by it there's so much here to really dig into things in other languages other histories that he's obviously gone and explored that I don't even understand. There's things I hear I have to Google to double check things on. Locations, obviously the animals here. I was like, what the fuck is that? These writings and barcodes, I knew. Uh, and there's lots of interesting messages that 16's left behind. Obviously his reference to the Animus being evil. Abstergo's plan, what he had to do to show us, to drain his body. He said to show us where he found it is 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 interesting and then he has those intertwining circles which i believe the three circles represent uh the the that holy trinity of juno minerva and jupiter especially since those circles that are unlinked when you unlink one therefore two have to be unlinked that's all thing mathematically or something with those circles uh to look at that and think okay well that you you'd imagine is a reference to Juno and how she could unlink and all of a sudden the whole thing comes apart uh, that's my interpretation of it and together the shots where he found it pointing directly at those circles he's talking about those two or he's pointing towards the animus which is obviously where he would have found it uh, they drained him so I drained my body the animus drained him it's evil Abstergo's plan and then he shows us lots of interesting locations where you think pieces of Eden would be you've got the pyramids here you've got an underwater formation here off an island of Japan you've got the Mayan pyramid 
You've got a mountain valley over over there, which could be I don't know, maybe like the Grand Temple. Maybe it's like because it kind of looks like is that like Machu Picchu or something? Maybe potentially that's Machu Picchu or something. I don't know, because it kind of looks like some ruins or something underneath it, just based on the lines there. And then those are most of the symbols out here, showing us locations for potential pieces of Eden. Obviously, those animals do. He's talking about where he discovered it. The evil, the animus, Abstergo's plan to send a piece of it into the sky, and these are locations he's helped them look for potential pieces. Then, of course, in here, we see his reference to the end of the world. Uh, writings from the Bible, dates from the Mayan calendar. He refers to different historical periods, obviously, lots of Chinese writings, uh, some Buddhist references, things like that. Uh, all just very creepy stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Subject 16 is for sure a creepy dude. Uh, and I find him by far the most interesting character in Assassin's Creed. So, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know, what do you think? Let me know, is there anything you feel like I've missed here, I got wrong? Is there a theory you can put together yourselves from this that I haven't mentioned before, potentially? I'd love to hear those. You guys know how much I love theories. And I just like to look at this. This is the first time I've really sat down and come and look at these symbols and be like, okay, these is how they connect. Because you can't just look at all these symbols as a bunch of individual symbols. They all connect, especially the way they're spaced together. Like I said, the ones here on this side with Abstergo's plan and potentially the watchful eye of Juno from the other side talking about the end of the world date, why he's showing us, and then he points to the triangle, uh, the three circles, I should say, the evil of the animus, and then lots of across here, along the walls and the edges, we have animals who represent piece of Eden, locations, Machu Picchu, Grand Temple or something, Mayan pyramids, uh, underwater formations in Japan, the pyramids in Egypt, they all connect, they're all placed there for a reason, nothing is accidental. Obviously, there's a lot of different things in the bedroom uh, that have a lot of different symbolisms and meanings and history meanings. Uh, so, I think there's a lot you can take away from them. You can look at them all individually, sure, but it's how they connect that I find the most interesting about Subject 16 and how even back here, we can look at it and have an idea of at least uh, concepts they had in their brain, whether they'd locked down the Juno scenario and all this other stuff. They obviously have the ideas of it, but how far have they gone? So they wanted to kind of uh, put that into our brains for people that really wanted to look into it and be like, okay, what potentially direction are they going? It's so fascinating to look back at Assassin's Creed 1 and see these symbols and put these plans together and how it went forward for the next five games. Super interesting. So I've wanted to do this video for ages and I just haven't gotten around to doing it. So finally sitting down, done it, ladies and gentlemen. I was thinking about doing this more professionally and just coming and recording the footage and then talking over it, but I like it this way, where we're kind of just casually going around, having a look, talking about it. Uh, un almost like an unscripted version where I'm literally having to Google a couple of those things at the time. But thankfully, I'm so addicted to this stuff that most of it I already knew and could kind of figure out just by looking at it. But Always fun, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in and getting this far in the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, in the comments, leave me ideas, theories, or anything that I might have missed or been mistaken on its meaning. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you very soon for the next video.